Hello, everybody on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere else that you might be listening or watching to this on our audio podcast. I'm Josh Oaks with SmartSocial.com. Today, I want to ask you, do your kids have a screen time addiction? Or perhaps are you maybe not setting the best, uh, let's say, maybe setting the best habits in your family or the best example? Today, we're going to talk about that. I have an absolute expert here with me today that I'm excited. This is his second time on the podcast. Dr. Mike Bishop is coming at me live right now from Tampa, Florida. He runs an organization called Summerland Camps, and he's going to tell us really quickly in one sentence or less what that camp does, and and then we're going to dive into some screen time habits that every family can benefit. Now, before we get started, we all have one of these. Now, Dr. Bishop has not given his kids one of these yet, but that's going to change at Christmas. (laughs) And it is inevitable. And it's really like a car, unfortunately. Oh, my kids don't have a car yet. I don't want them to drive yet. But eventually they have to get places and they have to communicate and be a part of the real world. Uh, So we want to talk about how to have a healthy dialogue before you give it to them and during especially. Dr. Bishop, welcome to the video. Tell us about your organization. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate you having me back on again. Yeah, so Summerlin Camps, uh, we've got two locations, uh, one in North Carolina, uh, one in California. Uh, We're a summer camp for kids that have some habits with screen time uh, behaviors, whether that's video games or using social media uh, or just basic Internet browsing. And uh, they need to learn uh, how to live with technology. You know, we can't apply old uh, uh, 12 step models to technology. So uh, we use a totally different approach. It's a coaching approach and uh, we get them excited about their future and talk about goal setting. And it's, it's a it's a. Uh, fantastic opportunity for for kids that are having problems with uh, uh, overuse of screen behaviors. All right, let's talk about those problems. So let's dive into what are some red, you've got a ton that you're going to share with us. What are the red flags that we should look at to find out if our kids have screen time bad habits? Yeah, thanks, Josh. I think the the first one that we see as parents is uh, if our kids are playing video games, uh, we see uh, sometimes a quick temper, especially when they're getting frustrated at a game, they're caught in a level that they, they can't get above it. Uh, you know, we, we, we see the blood rushing to their face. And uh, especially if you uh, add on to that, you're, you then ask them to get off the game and they, and they maybe they, you know, you know uh, lash out verbally at you. So seeing that quick temper uh, and, and seeing that the game has kind of got control of, over their moods and they're not able to, uh, you know, to self-soothe when they're playing video games. Um, and I think that translates well into the next uh, point I have, which is problems going to sleep or problems waking up in the morning. You know, if we just let our kids use devices without limits set on them, without some some rules and structure, you know, they're going to take their devices uh, to the bed with them and they're going to be up at night browsing social media or playing games. And uh, research is really clear on this. It, uh, it Allowing your child to have a TV or device in their room unchecked at night results in less sleep. Uh, results in uh, having a harder time getting up in the morning. Uh, And then the third uh, point I'd like to make is uh, a definite red flag is when you see your child passing up normal opportunities for socialization or outside play. You know, when you when your kid is uh, exclusively socializing through the Xbox, for example, um, you know, there's a lot of social learning that goes on with your neighborhood pick up games of basketball, kick the can. Uh, you know, when I was a child, we used to just invent games all the time. And, and there, there was so much social learning that happened uh, with that. And I think, you know, if, if, if your kids exclusively interacting and their recreation is exclusively through screen activities, they're missing out on a, on a, on a ton of uh, social learning opportunities. Yeah, those are all really great tips. So quick temper, problem sleeping, problem waking up, uh, passing up on real life opportunities to interact with other kids, which is super important. So those are some red flags. Let's jump over to my favorite part, Dr. Bishop, which is misconceptions. The I heard that this is the case, right? And we all have that. We as humans, we want to, we overhear things at events. So talk to us about a misconception about television that's in a kid's room. Yeah, uh, a great point. Uh, so, uh, again, the research is very clear on this. Uh, the, and, and most of the old research has to do with uh, televisions in your room. And there's some new research that's come out 
uh, specifically about interactive devices, okay? Because remember, your kid's more engaged when they're using an iPad or, you know, tablet or a phone uh, or, or, or playing video game through a TV versus just watching a television show. But uh, either way, the research is clear. Uh, kids with a TV in their room uh, sleep less uh, at night on average. Uh, they go to bed later uh, and then they sleep later. Uh, now, the, the impact differs uh, depending on which study you look at, but the, the, the consensus, is, the overwhelming consensus in the scientific community is that absolutely having a screen in your child's room when they should be asleep impacts sleep across the board. So essentially, uh, there's very little difference between the big screen of the TV and the right. smaller, more mobile and, screen. And, and, you know, some parents have this uh, belief that the television will lull the child into going to sleep or somehow it's, you know, this is going to. Uh, I, I think when you, when you look at the overall picture, uh, cost benefit, uh, you know, the, the cost outweighs the benefit of having a, a, a TV in your child's room. Got it. So, yeah, and we like to say the out, the downside does not outweigh the, or the downside outweighs the upside, which is a lot right. like our anonymous apps, our green zone apps, where your student might be hanging out like, oh no, but mom, it's cool. But the, the, the opportunity yeah. for something really bad to happen to your family very yeah. much outweighs the little opportunity of an upside. Right, right. Now let's talk about this. Another misconception. I'm going to be devil's advocate, but I heard that the way I use the web or the way I use my screen time doesn't affect my kids. Yeah, well, it absolutely does. Uh, you know, as a parent, you're role modeling for your child and, and, and your child's going to mimic your behavior. You know, if you want your child to read more, then you need to sit out in the living room and read more. Uh, so, you know, if you're, uh, if your child's screen activity is too much, you, you need to start by looking at your own. The other thing with uh, parents spending a lot of time on the computer or their phone is when they're around their child is that, uh, you know, your child might be trying to get your attention, you know, and you're missing out also on opportunities to interact with your child. So, uh, you know, if your child needs your attention, they could be more likely to act out uh, to get your attention if you're absorbed in your device. Yeah, that's very interesting, too. So we just talked about two misconceptions. TV might lull a kid to sleep. Not true. The data shows differently. And personal screen activity of the adult uh, does affect your children and, and so on. So I think that's very interesting. Thank you for those. All right, let's talk about how can parents help their children develop positive screen time habits. You've got a few tips there. Talk to us about yeah. explaining the purpose of a limit. Right. So, uh, you know, when obviously uh, children need limits when you first introduce the device to them. So how you go about enforcing those limits or explaining those limits initially is critical. Uh, you know, you shouldn't approach it just from an authoritarian standpoint that, uh, OK, you're, you only get this an hour a day. You can only go to these websites. This is what you have to do, uh, end of story. You really have to explain to the child why that is. You have to, like I was speaking about in my other uh, uh, conversation we had, you have to develop that intrinsic motivation in the child to really understand uh, what the limits are, what the dangers are, um, and, you know, and what you can do is when you're explaining, okay, this is why we don't uh, play video games after six o'clock on a school night, you can show them the research, uh, help them understand, you know, the effect of uh, screen activity on sleep, on their grades, on brain development. There's plenty of good research out there. And they're probably not too young to talk to as an adult, right? And saying, hey, look, no. we will get more sleep, even if you're eight years old. Look, this is right. right. And the parents that are watching this, it's, I, you know, Dr. Bishop, I love what you're saying, the intrinsic motivation. And essentially, I, I'm a much more simple man. I just run around the web and talk to kids. I, when I'm in my speeches, we tell every principal, look, we're going to talk to your kids like they're adults. We promise them. We show them what, the why. Why are we talking about this? What's the bigger picture? Parents, you can do the same thing. You're less of a bad person if you explain Hey, this is how we get into college. This is why this has to happen. This right. is why you need to get grades because you do you want to go to that great oh, school where you like the football player of the, you know all that stuff. I love that. Um, all right, so we talked about the explaining the purpose of the limit. Let's talk about setting expectations. 
Okay, uh, uh, sure. So, you know, I, I think when you set expectations uh, with your child, it, it really shouldn't be just upon your child. It should be part of the family culture. That's really the most effective way to, uh, to, to set up expectations. So, for example, you can say, all right, so, uh, you know, we have this rule of uh, 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 how much time we can play on our phones or on our tablets. As part of that, we're not going to have any technology at dinner time. Uh, mom and dad included. <laughs> and so what we can do is actually kind of make it fun, make it sort of a game. So um, inevitably someone will forget, maybe maybe it's dad, maybe it's mom, maybe it's the child. You know, we, they leave a phone in their pocket, up oh, the phone rings or, or beep, there's there's a text that comes in. Uh, okay, anybody anybody's phone that makes a sound at dinner, they have to do the dishes that night. <laughs> so, you know, we, 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 can, we can make it kind of fun. Uh, the other thing I like to do is suggest to families uh, that are struggling with uh, uh, screen overuse habits is to put the whole family on a pedometer, have everybody have their own pedometer, and then at dinner, everybody check in. And, you know, you show your pedometer, uh, you reset it at that point, and you can talk about what activity you did that day. And you can also link that into your family culture in terms of, uh, you know, the person with the most steps uh, gets to choose the dessert or, or, or what meal is uh, made the next day. Or the person with the least steps, again, has to do the dishes or set the table the next day. Yeah, it gets everybody moving. I really like that. That's a great tip. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about your, your last. Why is it important to have a dialogue with children once they have their own device? Well, you know, the overall arching uh, goal of this is that uh, kids really lack the ability uh, to see their consequences of their future behavior. You know, they don't have the life experiences that we do as an adult. So uh, you've got to discuss the risks with them and help them understand, OK, you know, what can happen if you conduct yourself in a certain way or in contact with certain people or are looking at certain content. So, you know, you can break these down into the three C's, inappropriate conduct, inappropriate contact, and inappropriate content. And you need to explain the differences between each and why each one presents its own hazards and what could possibly happen. That's interesting. The three C's, conduct, yeah. contact, and content. Can you talk to us yeah. about those three C's real quick? That's fine. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So. You know, the first one with conduct is, you know, kids, uh, they don't understand that they're not as anonymous as they think they are. And so, uh, you know, uh, they might be posting things about teachers or about friends or, you know, maybe it's even, you know, they're joking around online, making comments. Uh, you know, some some kids might uh you know, make a Facebook or an Instagram profile of uh, somebody they don't get along with at school, or maybe somebody that they do, they're just making a joke about, and they don't understand that there's real consequences uh, for this type of conduct. Uh, they're, if they're not as anonymous as, as they think they are. If, uh, you know, they say something that, that's, you know, that's threatening, uh, uh, you know, we, the, you can uh, find their IP address and track them down, they, they can get in some real trouble, and these kinds of things don't go away. Um, you know, the second one, uh, inappropriate contact, this one's pretty straightforward and most kids get this is that there are people out there with bad intentions and that could be as low as an online bully, uh, in their, in their school, uh, you know, that's gonna, uh, maybe somebody that's, uh, bullying them, but through, you know, you know, what we call trolling, they're gonna, they're gonna make an identity of someone else and, you know, kind of trick them and make fun of them. Uh, you know, there's also, you know, real sexual predators out there online uh, uh, looking for kids. Um, uh, certainly there's, um, you know, people that go online that are, you know, trying to steal information or, you know, get you to, you know, give mom and dad's credit card or your home address or find out when you're going on family vacations, so they can break in. So uh, inappropriate contact is, is, is the second category that, that children need to be educated on. Um, the third one, uh, and this one is a little more tricky, is the uh, inappropriate content. So, uh, you know, uh, obviously online pornography, some of these websites that uh, they have set up that has violence on them, even something like YouTube, you know, they have like these fighting videos on YouTube that, 
that people see. And um, you, know, you really need to explain to your child, you know, your brain is like a sponge and you know, what you, what you put into your brain is really what you're comprised of is, is, is what you're going to be thinking about. And you need to nourish your brain with, with healthy images. And uh, uh, you know, instead of spending your time looking at trash online, you know, uh, you know, go to Khan Academy and, you know, get ahead in math or, or go to the NASA website and learn about, you know, the, you know, the, the next mission or the, the space station, or, you know, the, there's, you, there, you know, you can go to, you know, so many different websites and as parents, we have to show them that these websites exist, you know, go, go check out the Smithsonian online and, you know, learn about yeah. history and things like this. And, and show uh, them good from bad. I think that's really great. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and kids don't really, you know, especially the, the pornography kind of that sort of warrants its own separate uh, discussion and we'll certainly be happy to have that at a future date. But, uh, you know, especially for young boys, they don't really understand the damage that they're doing uh, by watching that, you know, how uh, women are typically, uh, uh, you know, portrayed in pornography and that that can potentially hurt their ability to have a normal relationship. Uh, later in life, especially people with, you know, uh, you know, overuse habits that are, that, you know, really kind of become obsessed with it. So, yeah, that's all fascinating. So conduct, contact and content, those are three, the three C's. So we've talked about a whole lot here. Um, I want to leave you, you know, you, you talked to us a little bit about the red flags first and then the misconceptions and then Mm -hmm. developing positive screen time habits and then how, why it's so important to have a dialogue with your kids while they have a phone about the the uh, the positives and the negatives and how to look at it in a healthy way, uh, Dr. Bishop. I want to leave you with last last word. What what would you tell parents right now that have maybe already given their kids a device or are about to give their kids a device? What's the one thing they should take away? Yeah, I think if you take anything away from this conversation, is that uh, you really need to explain to your kids the why. Why, why am I setting these limits? Whether it's with time, whether it's with who you can contact, whether it's with the websites or the applications you use, you have to explain why that is so that they understand and they, and they value it. They just, and they don't see it as something to, well, here's a limit and I'm going to try to get around it uh, somehow. Cause kids are pretty savvy nowadays. Uh, if, if, if they don't understand why they should not do something that they'll probably uh, find a way to get around it. Yeah. We talk to a lot of students. We tell, we use a lot of cooking analogies and a lot of parents will say, well, that's a sharp knife. I happen to have a plastic knife in the office from lunch yesterday. I didn't use it, which is embarrassing, but hilarious. But well, they'll say, well, that's a sharp knife. You should never use it. But we always tell parents, look, why don't you ask your kids, are you hungry? What do you want to eat? How about we make some spaghetti? And then you say, if you told your kids, don't touch that hot stove, they're going to want to touch that. But if you said, hey, we're going to cook spaghetti, we're going to use that hot stove, those sharp knives and every utensil in here to make a delicious meal. And at the end, you're going to have something to eat. Help me. I'm going to give you tasks. I'm going to give you stuff to do. The kids then go, no, that stove is so useful. Yeah, I'm going to burn myself. But I got so much more to look at and do and resources. I mean, tell them about the end goal, the delicious food that'll pop out of that oven or whatever. and, and include them, right? We call, right. I call it treating kids like an adult, but I mean, there's there's the intrinsic motivation. I mean, so teaching the why uh, is so, so crucial. Dr. Bishop, thanks for being on here with us today. Thank you. All of you that are listening in, we appreciate everything that you're doing to help your kids have a healthy dialogue about their online behaviors. Remember, the internet can be very positive when you have a dialogue with your kids. The number one digital safety app is the dialogue that you have with your students. Be where they are at. If they're on Snapchat, please download Snapchat. Try it out. You may fail. They may laugh at you and with you. But please be where your children are at. You have a better propensity to protect your kids than any other safety app, than your school, you are the number one digital app that's gonna wake up at 2 a.m. and go get your kids and retrieve them from a party. No one else will do that. I'm honored to get the chance to hang out with you and experts like Dr. Bishop here today. I'll see all of you on the next episode or at smartsocial.com. See all of you soon. Have a great day.